While SpaceX was dominating the planet with Starlink, surging past 6 million subscribers and then tearing toward 8 million active customers in a matter of months, NASA was quietly forced to hand over an $843 million contract because the agency had no vehicle capable of safely bringing home the International Space Station. That is the sharp, brutal contrast of the new space age. While the old institutions wasted billions trying to defend a broken model, Elon Musk's company was building the backbone of global operations below and above the Earth. The legacy aerospace industry spent 30 years building the 450-ton station, but when it came time for the one job that mattered most, guiding it to a controlled, precise re-entry, they realized their flagships were useless. The truth they tried to hide was simple. Shuttle was retired. Orion was never designed for disposal. The space launch system was too expensive and inflexible for the task, and the Russian vehicles suffered leaks and failures. No legacy contractor, despite decades of taxpayer funding, had a vehicle capable of performing the controlled multi-burn deorbit of something as large and fragile as the ISS. Your tax dollars paid for a system that couldn't complete its final critical act. Instead, NASA was forced to select a purpose-built SpaceX spacecraft, an ISS deorbit vehicle, to execute the final most sensitive act of the most expensive orbital laboratory ever constructed. This was a contract earned through necessity, not politics, proving beyond doubt that SpaceX had become the most capable orbital operations organization on Earth. While NASA was exposed by a lack of capability in orbit, the global telecommunications industry was exposed by a lack of will on the ground, having grown fat on charging too much for too little. For decades, they survived not because their service was good or because they innovated, but because switching was impossible, leaving millions of customers trapped in a system designed to exploit them. Then Starlink arrived, and with a single strategic move, lowering the hardware cost, SpaceX blew a hole straight through the monopoly, making the industry's decades of refusal to build new infrastructure completely indefensible. The entire old system system was exposed when the price of the Starlink kit dropped, and the monthly plan plunged to an unbelievable $40, instantly demolishing the high price barriers that kept millions offline. This immediate, aggressive market attack was only possible because SpaceX embraced vertical integration, the exact opposite of the legacy aerospace and telecom model that inflates costs and delays schedules. SpaceX built the satellites, the rockets, the ground terminals, and the entire infrastructure, keeping every component under one roof free from subcontractor delays and legacy aerospace chains. Competitors relying on third-party launchers or external suppliers were permanently behind because SpaceX was moving as one unified machine, engineering dominance deliberately piece by piece with a level of speed and volume the old system never saw coming. This vertical control is why Starlink could slash the price and still expand profitably, while the outsourced, bloated legacy companies had no way to counter the move. The scale of Starlink's commercial victory is what most people don't know, yet the numbers are undeniable. Starlink surged past 8 million active customers worldwide by early November 2025, growing at a rate of more than 14,000 new users every single day. This is not linear growth, it is exponential momentum, cementing Starlink as the largest satellite internet provider in human history with more than 6,750 satellites in orbit across over 150 countries and territories. While the old systems debated procurement schedules, Starlink was already in orbit, expanding by thousands of satellites per year where others managed only dozens. This overwhelming deployment cadence was enabled by Falcon 9, which demonstrated orbital precision unmatched by legacy vehicles and could launch over 130 missions in a single year, making it the most reliable, most frequently flown rocket in history. 
This massive technical superiority comes down to a fundamental design choice. Starlink uses low Earth orbit satellites that slash latency and increase throughput, providing consistent service with sub 40 minutes latency that suddenly made connections playable for gamers who suffered for years with slow DSL. Traditional satellite providers used large, expensive geostationary satellites with massive latency, limited capacity, and spotty service, creating a system limited by physics and cost. SpaceX solved this by building a space-based mesh network where lasers connect satellite to satellite, allowing traffic to hop across the sky and reroute instantly if one path is blocked. This automated network management run by algorithms that constantly handle handoffs, spectrum, and load balancing is why the network can grow endlessly. More satellites simply mean more capacity, while legacy networks must wait years for a single static upgrade. The institutional failure of NASA and the legacy contractors went deeper than just not having a deorbit vehicle. Quiet warnings surfaced in technical memos and internal reports for years about the risks of abandoning a 450-ton structure in orbit with no reliable way to guide it safely home. If just one engineer had been listened to, the required vehicle could have been developed internally, saving face and billions of dollars, but instead, arrogance ruled the day. This pattern of ignoring warnings was mirrored by the telecom giants who believed their customers were too locked in to leave, dismissing the Starlink hardware price drop and the $40 monthly plan as impossible to sustain. They ignored every single warning, from pricing to user experience, while SpaceX delivered a self-install kit and an app with real-time tracking and remote diagnostics, a revolution that made the old system's technician in a van look like something from the last century. Wait until you hear who knew about this. Internal memos leaked from multiple legacy ISPs in 2025 show executives panicked, writing phrases like, Starlink is eating our rural footprint, and admitting, we underestimated their ability to reduce price. This wasn't just a loss of market share, this was the historic collapse of a system that refused to evolve. The old telecom giants, rather than innovating, desperately considered raising prices even more to make up for their losses, a move that only pushed more customers into the welcoming arms of Starlink. This is the doom loop, the spiral of arrogance punishing bad decisions and rewarding efficiency, where the old system's attempts to save itself only accelerated its downfall proving the failure wasn't just technical, but institutional and moral. The consequences for the legacy system are massive, delivering tribal satisfaction. Starlink is not just competing, it is becoming the digital foundation for the entire world, stepping into markets defined by failure, government failure, telecom failure, infrastructure failure, and delivering what others couldn't. When war disrupted communication, Starlink was there. When remote science missions needed band with, Starlink was there. When natural disasters struck, Starlink was there, proving it is a global communications infrastructure company, not just a satellite operator. This global reach is why Starlink saw industry-shaking, market-crushing growth across the globe, including Africa becoming one of its fastest-growing markets, India projecting 5 to 7 million new subscribers, and Zimbabwe recording an astonishing 29% quarterly growth. This is vindication for everyone who felt powerless against bureaucracy, a clear proof that innovation defeats incompetence. The ultimate justice came when NASA's selection of SpaceX for the $843 million ISS deorbit contract signaled a turning point, a transfer of trust from the U.S. government's flagship space program to a private company. SpaceX didn't win by lobbying or seniority. It won because Dragon had completed mission after mission with reliability, Falcon 9 had demonstrated unmatched orbital precision, and Starlink had 
had shown that SpaceX could design, deploy, and manage more active satellites than every government and corporation in the world combined. This moment proved that on the ground, Starlink won through competition, but in orbit, SpaceX won through necessity, forcing the old institutions to depend on the very company they once dismissed. The media won't tell you this, but reality punished the bad decisions and rewarded the engineering that solved the unsolvable problem. And here is what they're still doing today. While Starlink's first generation reshaped the world below, SpaceX is preparing next-gen Gen 2 satellites, larger, more capable, designed for Starship, to accelerate the constellation refresh cycles even further. This is the ongoing threat that legacy companies cannot outrun. Starship will deploy next-generation satellites in numbers Falcon 9 could never carry, and once Starship begins regular service, Starlink's capacity will skyrocket. While traditional satellite operators struggle to maintain aging systems, SpaceX will leap forward yet again, expanding faster, launching faster, and lowering costs faster than ever before. The China threat remains active as the nation targets 2030, but the global momentum of Starlink has has already given the efficient, innovative side a commanding lead, rewriting the map of global connectivity. The old system simply cannot compete and will be remembered the same way we remember dial-up companies today, because Starlink didn't come to match them, it came to replace them. SpaceX took an industry that thought it was untouchable and exposed it as outdated, greedy, and unbelievably slow, defining a future the old guard now has no choice but to follow.